My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Moss. Gotcha, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just a catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. That's the one. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Over the past six years, Mexico has really become a special place for me. We've made multiple trips down here now. I've had opportunities at some of my biggest, my best, and my first fish. For me, as an angler, Mexico really holds a special place in my heart. La Paz is the capital of Baja California Sur. It's a pretty big town but it's a town that hasn't lost its identity or its charm. I've been coming here since I was in my early 20s, and honestly, the town has been updated, but it hasn't changed much. It reminds me of Key West a lot, you know what I mean? Sleepy little town. And La Paz also gives you the perfect blend of the resources of a city, but you're only about 30 minutes away, you know, running the boat from the remote side. I mean, there's islands here where you can go, throw your anchor down, fish, make lunch, snorkel, have some drinks, whatever, all day long, and you will never see another human. Every time I come down here and I'm on that long flight, and I just this, this makes it all worth it right here. I mean, despite the great fishing and everything, it's, it's the food. Why do you come to Mexico? Is it the food or is it the fishing? A little bit of both. <laughs> A little bit of both. You know I love this stuff. The thing I like about this place, it's just so mellow. You can bring the wife, you can do walk up and down, it's totally safe. And you know me, I like my Baja adventure. This is easy. Most of the time coming down to Mexico, you know, we're making these crazy trips. Logistics aren't easy. We're coming down here, trailing the boat 24 hours to get to a destination. Then putting the boat in the water on some remote beach with a tractor. Coming to La Paz isn't like that at all. Uh, you have marinas, you have hotels. Still a little sleepy fishing village still. Totally. But has all the comforts of home. Rush has really seen almost all of my favorite places in Baja and even mainland at this point. You know, we did the Upper Sea of Cortez, one of my favorite places on earth to fish, you know, throwing lures at the rocks for Cabrilla, catching yellowtail. I mean, we did Puerto Vallarta, which was my second home for over a decade, and we caught some big, big tunas. And you talk about remote, we went to Abreojos and La Bocana. That is a tiny dot on the map that houses some of the best grouper fishing in the world, and also some of the best people in the world. Yeah, so tomorrow, I think we're gonna go fish some inshore, try and catch one of those big roosters that we've heard about and then we'll probably slide offshore a little bit, just a few more miles to a bank out there, and it's uh, just underwater rock pile because it's like 100, I think 175 feet off memory, and that's where the big Kuberas live. When I come down here to Mexico and Baja, I always want to target like species that I can't catch at home. Roosterfish has been on my bucket list forever. I thought you caught one, I've no? I've never caught a roosterfish. Oh, fish. no way, you're never. gonna be so stoked. You never are gonna, caught a roosterfish. Dude, it's a Mexican permit. And I've never seen one, caught one, uh, even laid hands on one. All right, man. Well, we're going to eat some dinner. We'll crash out early. We're going to meet those guys at 630 at the fuel dock. And let's go put the wood to them. I'm excited, dude. I'm excited yeah, I'm, for you to see this I'm place. I'm really excited. This is like something I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah I think you're going to dig it. All Have right, a coldie and let's get to bed early. You know, typically when we would do a private boat trip down here, especially to Baja, we're towing a boat with us. Coming to La Paz and towing a boat for a short shoot like this, the logistics will just kill you. It's a two-day drive. So we came down expecting to, you know, fish with a charter guy, but in this case, we lucked out. How are you, man? Good. Let's go get some fish. Good to Senores. finally connect. How are you? Yeah. Man, what a nice boat. Yeah, Patrick with Baja Venture Company, I met a few years ago online. So what's the plan? Uh, let's go look for some roosters. Rooster Morning. fish first. 
and then we'll maybe tie up on El Bajo, it's called? Like, uh, he was starting this new charter operation down here, doing more than just fishing. He offers whale watching tours and water sports and all that stuff. But right away, I noticed he was doing things at a higher level. So we're gonna start like a Spiritu Santo or something? Yes, sir. On okay. the east side, wait till the wind Get comes out of the down wind. a little bit. Yeah. And, and I kind of always kept an eye on what he was doing, and it was pretty clear after a while he was running a first-class operation. So we got two main seasons, I would say. It's like a, we have a really strong like spring fishery for yellowtail, grouper, snapper, uh, which I could say would be my favorite. Then the summer kicks in. We got a little bit of a mixture of both, and then we got like our summer fall fishing for the pelagics that most of the people come for, right? I don't want to step on the bait. <laughs> That's the live well. Like any other fishing trip, preparation is key. What do you need to go target rooster fish? Uh, first thing, you need your rods. Second, you're going to need bait. One of the things that Rush likes to complain about all the time, and it's a long list of things that Rush likes to complain about, but probably top of his list is having to throw the cast net. But then, we pull up to a beach and it is covered in bait. And guess who can't wait to jump in the ponga and throw the cast net? Not every day you get to be down in Mexico throwing the net off a beach, catching almost the same bait I catch back home. Rush was in there side by side with the local bait guys, making it happen and providing us with bait for this trip. Look at that net. They are thick. Beautiful baits. Not too many things get me more excited than catching bait. When you roll with Ali, it, it's easy to get soft. I still like to go back to my roots. This right here is definitely going to enhance our chances. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Mercury. Go boldly. Penn. Let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Seagar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And by BDOutdoors.com. What do you want to have ready here? So what we'll typically do when we fish this way is we'll walk some baits around if we have bigger live baits because they love a mullet and they love a ladyfish. You know, rooster fish is probably one of the most iconic species down here in Baja. They're typically found on sandy beaches that border some kind of structure. So walking some bigger baits around the mullets and then have some poppers on standby. Yep. I can totally see like some bait getting showered up in here. And yeah, the, and, the and while we're bed. walking them around, just go to the bow and make some cash. You'd be surprised what you find. Everybody thinks you catch them off a sandy beach, which isn't really correct because usually there's gotta be some kind of structure to hold that bait or structure nearby or whatever. So if I'm looking for a spot to chase a rooster fish that I'm new to, I'm not just looking for that sand, but I'm looking for the sand with that shallow reef. And Rolling up to these rocks, the plan was to have some poppers ready to go, some mad scads, and also some of these baits that we had caught. I wasn't on my bait. Slow trolling them along the rocks, along the edges, and just working in and out. No, the mullet's still there. He's kicking around. Trying to get some of these fish to come off the rocks. Oh, blow up back there. That's oh, rooster, oh, look like That's what we want. Oh, he's chasing nice it. That's one. a good one. Nice one. That would be a good one. Holy smokes, that was a blow up. Throw some chunk. So the rooster fish, even though it's not a jack, reminds me a lot of a jack. Get him. Nice, Rachi. Something's on there. Ooh, that's a good fish. That's the right flavor. A very powerful, pretty fish. Dude, did you see that head come out of the water on that thing? I told you, man, when they commit, they just go straight ass over tea kettle. And that isn't a small bait. No, and that isn't a small fish. Nice work getting them hooked. It's a very aggressive fish, just like a jack would be. You know, you'll see them pushing baits around, spraying baits, chasing them all around. It's just a big, powerful fish. That first run was good. Oh, he's far from done. There you go. That's what we came here for. Oh, I'm so stoked, dude. I wanted to see this guy. You get him on that big circle, too. And, you know, usually you hook him really well. Don't jinx me. Different fight. Very erratic. Keeps swimming, turn, making a lot of turns. Almost 
Oh, I no, mean, like I I'm telling you, they'll jump. You don't see Jax jump. The way he turns like that and stuff, it's almost like a wahoo. Yeah. I mean, he's turned a couple times and come right back at the boat. No, they get crazy. They are one of the coolest fish that there is. I mean, the way they look, the way they fight. The bite nuts. The bites are always awesome. And the difference, like, between this and an amberjack, you know, an amberjack is usually more Dogging you straight down. up and down. Yeah. Well, you're only... Look at that angle. Actually, you're in 60 feet here. This is pretty And here's deep. deeper. Sometimes, like, yeah. right on the beach. A lot of times, we'll catch them in 10 like... or 12 feet. Should be able to get a look at them. Oh, oh there you go. Flash. Saw a flash. Nice one, oh, huh? Yeah, that's a good one. Almost looks like an it's African pompano in the water. It's, I mean, it's not, it's not tiny no, at it's all. it's not small. It's good. It's medium. You know, just like you check items off of your bucket list in terms of fishing, when we go out on a trip and we're trying to do something, target a fish, whether that's get me a permit or get Russia rooster, you know, we kind of have a plan. We've got a couple species in mind, and step one is knock off that first fish. That is a nice way to start the trip, huh? Oh, 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 dude, get your hands on this thing. I know you want to hold them. Didn't take long, and what do you know, Rush got to check one off the list. Welcome to Baja, Rush. I love Baja. I'm stoked. Uh, if I didn't catch another fish all day or the rest of the trip, mission accomplished. I, I wanted that one fish, and I was as happy as could be. This is, I've been wanting to catch one for so long. You only get your first once, you know what I mean? That's, That's right. a good way to start, a really good way to start. My first rooster fish weighed about three pounds. Russia's first rooster fish was at least 10 times bigger than that. He got his hands on a heck of a sample for his first catch. Oh, all right, dude, let's let this guy go, man. That's a beautiful what a fish, fish man. huh? Let's get rid of them. Thanks, buddy. And we were on our way to go look for something else. Okay, so the next plan is run out to El Bajo, sea mount outside, and we're gonna make some bait, some skipjack to cut it up, anchor up on the high spot, and we're gonna try to make some chihuahuas. You know the program, just get it just like your Florida thing. Get the anchor out and just start those inch chunks. Chunk it, huh? And wait, oh, oh, oh. and when the bait will come up, wait and wait, and then you just fire baits down into it, and a lot of times those fire in the big, big snappers are down. In Mexico, there's a few terms that they use to describe every fish. If it's shaped like a bass, it's a cabrilla. When we say cabrilla, we're talking about leopard grouper. And when you say pargo in Mexico, you're talking about snapper. Specifically, when we say pargo, we're talking about the dog tooth snapper. We put the live bass down, but also like big chunks big of chunks, skipjack. They like that. Because there's a lot of trigger fish on these grounds, no? Yeah. Um, this fish is maybe the meanest fish in these waters in terms of a violent strike, a violent fight, and an instant tug of war that will break gear, break leader, break braid. It'll just break your heart. It feels a little bigger than a uh, oh, finger they, mackerel. They pull like hell. Oh no, these are skipjacks. Oh, these are skip, skipjacks. I'm waiting for one of those little um, no, mackerel. No, these Pargo eat like most snappers. They actually prefer, in many cases, a chunk of fresh dead bait. Oh, he's not done yet. God, they do pull harder than hell. These things get 20 pounds, and you get three on the planer board, you have to back the boat on them. You can't pull them in with a 50. Yep. So you need a chunk of meat, you're in Mexico, and there's only one volunteer that really comes to mind, and that's the skipjack tuna. How many of these will we try and get? As many as we need, as many as we want. I'll chunk the hell out of them. Now we're gonna get into something I'm a little more familiar with. This is the same skippy that you catch back home, just bigger? Us, the yeah. purple ones are, the black ones with the black dots we catch in some years, but the they're, that's a black oceanic skipjack. I was really surprised by how much bait Patrick and Rigo wanted for this. I'm like, whoa, you know, this is a, this is a lot of bait. And there was a reason for it. Come on, come on, come on. The skipjack tuna is super plentiful in these waters. It is a big part of the reason why we see these big pargos, why we see these big marlin, and we see these big tuna. They are sort of like our sardine in California. They're the staple bait for the bigger fish down here. Local knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats. Lead the way. Costa Pro Series. See what's out there. Aftco. Any fish, any water. JL Audio. How we play. Casa Vieja Lodge. 
Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. Taco Marine. Troll the Edge. Sat Fish. The Science of Being Lucky. And by the Saltwater Angler Key West. There's a couple pieces to the puzzle, right? The first thing is chunk them up, chop them up, start putting it over the side. You're basically starting a chum slick. You're, you're, you're ringing the dinner bell, you're firing everybody up. Uh -oh. That didn't take long. No, maybe it's not a... That drag should be pretty tight. Mm -hmm. I got, into got the you rocks. in the bottom. Yeah. The biggest challenge when you're fishing for Pargo, hands down, is wrestling them out of the rocks. They want to get back in that hole as fast as they can and break your heart. It looks like he's got you in the bottom. Oh, Sancocho! As soon as you feel that bite, you need to lock that reel up and pull for everything you're worth. And whether you win or lose that fight will be determined in the first five seconds. Caught you off guard. Why well, should I put more on? I got a saying, pop them or stop them. Yeah. There's no drag out fight. There's no long dogged run like a tuna. You're either gonna get them out of the hole or you're not. If you can't pull them out of that hole, instant game over. Down there. You see him? Oh, I see him, I see him. Oh my God, that's a good one. <laughs> you gotta put the heat to him. Thanks coach, you got any other tips? Big Pargo, right on the like 50 pounder. The biggest problem with fishing these Cabarras, these dog teeth snapper, is it's a very low probability fishing. Oh, damn it. Got a bit? No, oh, I got, got a stupid a skipjack on the little chunk of bait I had left. Look at him down I there. Look at him right under everything down there. Big one. Yeah. Whoa. Look at that that's one. A Ooh, that's a big one. Good huh? one. That's a big one. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's a giant. Be ready, senor. I mean, these guys are some of the baddest fish in the ocean when it comes to bottom fishing. Up it. Up it. Ah. That's the downside. Oh, he's back. They are so hard to stop. It, it, it's like basically trying to stop a freight train. Is that on the bottom? Is that on the bottom? Right next to it. And they're very good at what they do. They, they run right to their hole. Yeah, that's the thing is you gotta keep it off the bottom because you just don't stand a chance. Oh, that was a real one. You know, there's a lot of fisheries that I enjoy fishing in, which are high risk, high reward, low probability fishing. Get him. Get a crank. Get a crank. Put it all the way up. Ah! It's all the way up. Thumb Use your thumb, 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 thumb. Go to the back. I think he found the 80 pounder. The 80 pounder found his cave. It's low success for the number of bites you're gonna get. Uh, you got them, stop. You got them, get a crank, low gear. I have gone to extreme measures like a 50 wide offshore reel with 300 pound test in a rod holder and I've gone 0 for five. And that's the challenge that makes them so addicting. Turn them, you got them, you got them, you got them. He got you, he got you, he got you. Ah! <laughs> You need way bigger gear. That's way what you need. That'll do it. That'll do it too. You almost had them. The good thing about Pargo fishing is there are some really great consolation prizes. While you're not going to land probably most of the Kuberas that you hook, you are going to land some other awesome snappers that are equally delicious. You were saying, Rutchie? It looked like he straightened out. <laughs> I was feeding him. Feel like the right I one? I felt the triggers clear. It's a, it looks like a small one. You can see it down there. It looks orange. Oh, it's right on the boat. Yeah, I'm already. Uh, 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 oh, no, mulatto. Good mulatto. Big mulatto. Nice. That's what we saw in we'll the take uh, restaurant, right? On the yeah. wall? Pargo it's mulatto. Fish, huh? yeah, Very man. cool. It's a barred pargo, or they call it a rock pargo. Mexicans call it pargo mulatto. They're really a cool fish. Yeah, it's like a sheep head slash snapper. Totally nailed it. What do you think we make this guy into a few tacos? They're good eating? Oh yeah, they're really good eating. White like meat. Like any snapper. Really? Similar to mutton. Very similar to mutton. That's ah, crazy yeah, coloration on them. All right, let's go ahead and box this guy. I was so stoked to bring Rush down and be able to show him one of my favorite cities in Baja. I love La Paz for a lot of reasons. It's not huge. Yellow, yellow part. <sighs> Pretty fish. Oh, nice, cool. nice, nice. Pargo Amarillo. 
Number one is really the people. It's an awesome town. It hasn't gotten too big. Everybody's friendly and still says hi. And then the second reason is, of course, the fishing. These are delicious. There's so many options here that you can't get anywhere else in the world except for maybe Cabo. Yeah, Rush, we're gonna go do a little cook your catch, whole fry, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, oh, that'd be awesome. Look at the size of this dude, he's perfect for the job. Coming to La Paz really opened my eyes to the fact that, wow, this is a great spot that I could actually bring my family, my two kids, my wife. In my opinion, La Paz is the perfect mix of a little sleepy fishing town with all the infrastructure to make it a great tourist destination.